Yo, what's up? Dr. Swole here, MD, pro physique athlete. Today I'm gonna to be giving you a full four day hypertrophy program that is barbell and dumbbell only using the upper lower split. I've been getting a lot of requests to do a program like this that only uses barbells and dumbbells. This is going to be really useful for anyone training at home and has limited access to equipment. But it's also going to be great for beginners and people who are less experienced. Barbell and dumbbell training has a lot of advantages over other types of training even with all other things considered equal. And for myself, I heavily focused on barbell and dumbbell training in my earlier training years. We'll start off with a program walkthrough where I'll share everything you'll need to know to run this program yourself including exercises, sets, and reps. This is a four day low volume program which will be great for beginners and people who respond to low volumes. Then we'll talk about the weekly layout or how to spread out your workouts across the week. And finally, we'll talk about the pros and cons of this barbell and dumbbell only four day upper lower program. All right, let's do our program walkthrough. So this is Dr. Swole's four day barbell and dumbbell only upper lower program. It's a low volume program which will be well designed for beginners and people who respond well to low volumes. We've got upper body day one, lower body day one, upper body day two, and lower body day two. Here are the exercises and there are the sets and reps. Down here we have the total number of sets for each workout so you have an idea of workout length. And here we have the total number of sets for each muscle group each week. Let's start off with upper body day one. We kick it off with bench press for the chest four sets and we're using a my rep scheme here so you're going to work up to one top heavy set of five to eight reps followed by three back off sets of five to eight reps with lighter weight about 10 percent off the bar a top set back off method like this allows you to get in some heavy strength work while still accumulating volume with your lighter sets then we have barbell rows for the back three sets of six to ten after that incline dumbbell flies for the chest three sets of 10 to 15. I think incline flies are an underrated upper chest movement. Dumbbell flies allow you to get a really good stretch at the bottom. And there is research showing that the weighted stretch is going to be good for hypertrophy. Then we have dumbbell pullovers for the back, three sets of 10 to 15. This follows a similar principle to dumbbell flies where pullovers get your really nice heavy tension at the bottom of the movement where your lats are at maximum stretch. And it's one that I didn't think too much of when I was starting out and only had limited access to equipment. Then we have dumbbell skull crushers for the triceps, three sets of 10 to 15. Dumbbell upright rows for the side delts, but also the traps, three sets of six to 10. And finally, dumbbell lateral raises for the side delts, three sets of eight to 12. Even if you aren't gonna follow this program exactly, I think watching this video is gonna give you a lot of insights on barbell and dumbbell variations that I like for hypertrophy. So feel free to swap in and out exercises as you please, but this will give you some inspiration. Then we have lower body day one. We start off with squats for the quads, five sets, and when you're gonna work up to one top heavy set of five to eight reps, followed by four back off sets of five to eight reps with about 10% lighter weight. Then we have RDLs for the glutes and hamstrings, two sets of six to 10. The great thing about having a barbell is that it's quite versatile and allows you to get in a lot of heavy training for your main muscle groups. So I really would suggest getting one if you are training at home and have limited access to equipment. Then we have Bulgarian split squats for the quads and the glutes and hamstrings, three sets of eight to 12. One of the issues when you have limited equipment is the ability to overload your back and legs. So finding good barbell and dumbbell variations for back and leg training is gonna be key here. Then we have barbell curls for the biceps, three sets of eight to 12. I'd recommend going around shoulder width grip on these. Then we have single arm preacher curls for the biceps, two sets of six to 10. And you're using a dumbbell with a bench set to around 60 degrees. And then we have single leg dumbbell calf raises, four sets of 10 to 15. Then we have upper body day two. We start with barbell overhead press. This will hit your front delts, but also a little bit of upper pecs and triceps, three sets. And we're using a top set back off method again. One top heavy set of five to eight reps followed by two back off sets of five to eight reps with lighter weight. These work well both seated and standing, so find what you like. Then we have close grip bench press for the chest, but also the triceps, four sets of six to 10. After that, weighted chin ups to the back, three sets of six to 10. This is assuming that you have some sort of chin up attachment on your barbell rack. If you don't, then I would recommend substituting with some more barbell rows or heavy dumbbell rows. Then we have dumbbell seal rows for the back, three sets of eight to 12. This is a great free weight option for doing chest supported rows if you don't have a chest supported row machine. I like just leaning over an incline bench set at about 15 to 30 degrees. Then we have dumbbell skull crushers for the triceps, three sets of six to 10. We're repeating the same exercise, but using different reps. This allows you to fit in some variation without necessarily having to use other exercises. And finally, dumbbell lateral raises for the side delts as well, three sets of 10 to 15. Going on to lower body day 
two, we start with deadlifts for the glutes and hamstrings, three sets. And you're gonna work up to one top heavy set of five to eight reps, followed by two back off sets of five to eight reps with about 10% lighter weight. After that, we have squats again for the quads, four sets of six to 10. So you are squatting twice a week in this program, but we do mix up the rep ranges and the second day is more of a volume day. So you're not focused as much on pushing heavy weight, but more so getting in the volume. Then we have good mornings for the glutes and hamstrings, two sets of 10 to 15. After that, line bicep curls for the biceps, three sets of six to 10, and hammer curls also for the biceps, two sets of 10 to 15. You'll notice at this point that I moved my bicep training off of upper body days onto lower body days. This is a modification that I like to make to the upper lower program, which solves a couple of the disadvantages of the traditional upper lower split. You'll see that biceps are actually trained four times per week in this program when you count that they're trained indirectly with your pulling movements on upper body days. What program do you guys wanna see me cover next? Let me know in the comments below. I am the CEO of Free Hypertrophy Programming on YouTube. All right, now that you've seen the program, let's talk about my weekly layout. Here's my preferred order of days. We have upper body day one, rest. Lower body day one, rest. Upper two, lower two, and rest. The upper lower split is one of my favorite setups for four days per week. One of the major advantages is how flexible it is. You can see that we can move days around quite easily because of the fact that days don't interfere with each other. For example, we can move this lower body day over here, we can move it over here, or we could take this lower body day and move it onto the next day over here. Now, when you do have days back to back, I prefer having the upper body day coming before the lower body day. This is because a tough leg day can impact your upper body training coming after if you're really fatigued, but not so much the other way around because upper body training is less fatiguing. Also, this is a small thing, but you'll see that the modification that I made was to take biceps off of upper body days and move them onto lower body days. When you have biceps and back on separate days, you want the biceps to come after back training because sore biceps could affect your back training productivity, but again, not so much the other way around. Now, ideally, I would like to spread out my rest days as much as possible to make the most out of them. So this is why I haven't set things up as an upper lower rest rest upper lower. But you can absolutely shuffle days around as necessary. And this is the reason why upper lower split is one of the most heavily used splits that I've used throughout my medical career. I have to work these 24 hour shifts as a doctor and they do get scheduled unpredictably. So I need to have a split that allows me to work around my schedule. This is also going to be useful for someone who's really busy and say has a family and kids and they can't always bank on being in the gym on certain days. All right, now let's talk about the pros and cons of this barbell and dumbbell only four day upper lower program. This program is different from my other programs since we really focus on free weight training. We're gonna talk about the unique benefits of barbell and dumbbell only training. First of all, when you're exclusively using free weights, you have a lot of heavy overload type movements and develop a lot of strength, but also produce a lot of stimulus for hypertrophy. This isn't 100% foolproof, but when you have an exercise that allows you to use more weight, as long as you're getting a good range of motion, it usually means more stimulus. So a heavy barbell bench press is probably gonna give you more hypertrophy stimulus than say a cable press, even though the cable press will also target your pecs over a large range of motion. Note that stimulus isn't the only aspect of the equation we need to think about because fatigue is also an issue. We'll talk about that more in the cons section. Next advantage of this program is that you have a large amount of muscle mass involved with your heavy free weight movements. You'll see that we have lots of heavy barbell and dumbbell compounds in this program. These exercises are great because they use a lot of muscle mass, both from the aspect that they're compound and also from the aspect of using more stabilizers because they're free weight movements. I think people in their first few years of training will do better if they focus on exercises that involve more muscle mass overall. You really wanna focus on getting as much global hypertrophy as possible in your first few years. This is also gonna be great for people who are short on time because movements like these are going to be most time efficient. Doing heavy squats, deadlifts, bench presses, and rows is gonna get you a lot of bang for your buck per set. Next, this program is highly flexible and portable. One of the main advantages of the upper lower split set for four days per week, as we talked about earlier, is how easily you can move around days. I think this is massive just because a lot of people out there have trouble sticking to a consistent plan. So you wanna choose a program that is really flexible from the get-go so that you don't start falling off plan and just going off track because you missed a couple of days. The other thing I wanted to bring up is that when you focus on barbell and dumbbell training, this type of training is the most portable. 
Because nearly all gyms have barbells and dumbbells, you can take your workout wherever you want to go, whether you switch up gyms in your own city or if you're actually traveling. This way you can stick to the same program and continue making progress week by week. If you're traveling and you have to switch up machines all the time, this isn't a terrible thing. But if you really want to be optimal, you want to be able to stick to a consistent plan for at least a few months on end in order to develop both neuromuscular adaptations and hypertrophy. It takes some time to be able to build technical skill with a movement. So if you're traveling and you have to switch up and test out random machines, you may not get as good a stimulus. Finally, this modified upper lower split solves some of the disadvantages of the traditional upper lower split. What I did here was I moved biceps off of upper body days onto lower body days. First of all, the upper lower split tends to favor upper body days just because your upper body has more muscles to train in them. So a traditional upper lower split will actually favor the legs and make it harder for you to balance out your upper body priority. But when we take some small muscle group off of upper body day and move it onto lower body day, this evens out our days and allows us to give equal priority to the upper and lower body. Next, this modification allows us to train biceps when they're fresh and not fatigued after back training. Biceps are used indirectly with back pulling movements and with a lot of common splits like push pull legs and upper lower, your biceps will come after back training. This also applies to triceps and chest and shoulder training. This means that you won't perform as well on your direct small muscle group training after you've done your compounds because they're already indirectly fatigued. But if you move biceps off of back training, you're able to train when fresh and you'll be able to lift more in terms of weight and reps. One other nice thing you saw in this program is that biceps get a higher frequency of four times per week when we separate it from back training. This is because biceps are used indirectly with back work. And biceps do tend to do well with higher frequencies. Okay, now that you've heard me talk about the pros, let's go over the cons of this barbell and dumbbell program. First of all, this program has limited movement patterns. As you might have noticed, we actually don't have any leg extensions or leg curls in this program. These are going to be difficult if you don't have access to machines. You can't clutch a dumbbell between your ankles and do leg extensions and leg curls on a bench, but these tend to be quite awkward to do and have difficulty with overload. That is, they're kind of awkward to really go heavy on. So particularly since I designed this program more for someone in their earlier years of training, I opted to just have you focus on main compound movements. And as a beginner or intermediate, you still will reap the majority of your gains from main compound training. But I will note that with barbells and dumbbells only, you will have trouble with some aspects of particularly back and leg training. For example, if you don't have a chin up bar, it will be difficult to get in heavy vertical pulling. Keep in mind that even if you are training at home, but you have more equipment, like say you have a cable stack, I would recommend making substitutions and using the equipment you have. Next disadvantage of this program is focusing on solely barbell and dumbbell training is more fatiguing and you tend to have more axial loading, which comes from compressive forces on the spine. Also, just by the fact that you're moving around more weight will generate more fatigue. Now, fatigue isn't that big of an issue for beginners, but at an advanced level, it will become a limiting factor. At a high level, you want to be looking at an exercise's stimulus to fatigue ratio. For example, a heavy barbell squat might produce a lot of stimulus, but also produces a lot of fatigue. Meanwhile, a hack squat may not produce as much stimulus for the quads, but will produce less fatigue. An advanced athlete might actually get a better stimulus to fatigue ratio from hack squats. And this is why you'll see a lot of advanced pro bodybuilders moving away from the main heavy compounds like squats and deadlifts. However, as a beginner, this doesn't matter so much because you aren't lifting enough to generate enough fatigue to actually affect the equation. So you can still recover from all of that fatigue. And in that case, I would prefer you actually choose the higher stimulus exercise. But just note that if you are finding troubles with fatigue, you're tired all the time, you're not recovering and you're not progressing well, then you might want to consider trying to get some machines in to reduce the amount of fatigue, but still get a good stimulus. When we move to barbell and double only training, another problem we run into is that we have less exercise variety. This refers to the limited amount of variations you have for each movement type. You can get quite a bit of variety by switching up grip widths and changing angles that you're lifting at. But ultimately over longer time scales, you will start running into staleness issues when you're using the same exercises. Again, this is a more of a late intermediate to advanced issue. As a beginner, I think you can go a long ways with pretty limited exercise selection. But eventually you will want to have a bit more variety that you can switch exercises to when something gets stale and you run into a stall in progress. Having less exercise variety also gives you less latitude to move around to work around chronic aches and pains and injuries. If you do have chronic aches and pains that are 
exacerbated by certain movement patterns. It will help to have a bit more variety in your implements to be able to switch up the stimulus. It will be nice to have exercise variety to be able to switch up the type of stress that you're putting on your connective tissues. This is one of the beauties of bodybuilding. Since we have the ability to get a good stimulus from so many different exercise variations, we're able to quite effectively avoid chronic overuse injuries if we have intelligent programming. Finally, triceps come after pushing in this program. And this is just an inherent disadvantage of the upper lower split. You'll see that it did take biceps off of upper body days so you can train them when you're fresh. Triceps can be a bit more tricky since you rely more heavily on them in pressing movements. So if you have sore triceps from say putting them on leg days, it could affect your pushing on your upper body days. So I didn't make that modification in this program, although it is possible in a torso limbs setup. If you want to see an example of how I program, check out this video where I share my full training program that I was using earlier this year, which uses a full body split over four days per week. Modified full body is a really powerful setup and you can see how I program as a more advanced lifter. Make sure you subscribe to the channel for more free science-based hypertrophy programs. No one else is giving you this kind of value on YouTube guys and we'll see you next time.